So welcome to my lecture series. Today we are going to discuss about MM kinetics. So MM kinetics is basically explains the enzymatic reaction. In our previous video, I have explained the difference between a chemical reaction that is a non-enzymatic reaction and enzymatic reaction, how the reaction profile changes. And if you look at that, So the graph that we have discussed in the previous um, enzymatic reaction, we have seen that if the graph between product and substrate, especially the rate of reaction versus yes, if I'm calculating, so I'll get the graph something like this. So in the previous, <clears throat> so this is a saturation point. So our normal chemical reaction in models like uh, what we have seen, K, R, K, R is equal to K1 into the substrate is not in, uh, explain this graph because as per this equation, the reaction is a first order reaction. So it is not obeys this, that is the explain this. So now we need a special models that explain this particular graph. So that is a graph, the what is called is a Michaelis Menten. There is a two scientists who ex, uh, explain this graph, how enzyme saturation works. So that is Michaelis Menten graph or I can say equation. They simply they call MM equation. So that is very familiar MM equation. Right. So today we are going to discuss how to develop the MM equation. So for MM equation we take an, a reaction say something like this. So the enzymatic reaction enzymes converted into a substrate that again form an enzyme substrate complex then it forms an enzyme plus product. If you look at the this particular reaction, this reaction is a reversible reaction. So that is if I am not converting into a product, the enzyme substrate complex is destabilized and come back to the original substrate formation. Whereas the conversion of enzyme substrate to an enzyme product is a, um, uh, is a non reversible reaction. And compared to these three reactions, the most slowest reaction is this. So why I'm mentioning that? Always we know that among the group of reaction, whichever the reaction is the slowest one, that is the one is determine the overall rate because we have individual rate of reaction for each of these reactions. But if I want to calculate the overall rate of reaction, then I should consider whichever is the slowest reaction. So here, this is the slowest reaction. Say I am including a rate constant for each of these reactions. Say this reaction, the first reaction say K1, K2 and K3. So we are looking at the third reaction. So if I want to calculate the rate of reaction that is V, that is nothing but dP by dt because here the product as well as this is the reaction of the slowest one. So V is equal to dP by dt. Right? So this is what we need to calculate. So what is the dP by dt? dP by dt is equal to K3 that is the rate constant then the substrate of that reaction. Why I am including ES? Because you can see from this example R is equal to K1 into substrate. Only the substrate the reactant side that should supposed to be multiplied with the rate constant in order to find out the rate of reaction. The same thing what we are doing here, here the V is equal to dP by dt is equal to K3 into ES. Why K3 into ES? We are just to follow, look into the third reaction that is this reaction alone. So that's why it's a K3 into ES. Say this is 1, equation number 1. So if you want to calculate the rate of reaction, I should calculate the how much ES is produced in the reaction 
then I should substitute here along with the rate constant in order to calculate B. So this model is very simple if I know what is ES. But the ES is generally is unmeasurable during the experiment. So what I should do in order to make this uh, in a practical way, if I want to use this equation in a practical way in experiment, I should replace this ES which is unmeasurable into a measurable entities. So this entire equation the development is only focused on that. So you remember this equation number one. So I will put it in a simplified form V is equal to K3 into ES. This is equation number say I not one this is I. Now how to replace this? So here to replace this there are many approach two approaches but today what we are going to see is a quasi steady state approach quasi steady state approach what is this this is not the original approach developed by the Michaelis and Menten because the, those scientists who are not that they approach they used the equilibrium approach. But here later they modify by there is another two scientists called Briggs and Halden. They introduce this approach in order to develop the same equation. The end equation is the same but the way is different because it is easy to explain in certain examples. So what is that quasi steady state says? So according to this is whatever the intermediate form here in this equation what is the equation again I'm rewriting in this in order to understand e this is the equation so here the intermediate is this so according to this the change of intermediate concentration with respect to time is constant or it is there is no change. So there is no change is not constant mean it is equal to 0. No there is no change actually it is not actually constant it is a no change. So if I put it in a mathematical differential equation form the DES by DT is equal to 0. So this is a steady state approach developed by the brick and Hatton. Now according to that, if I want to calculate DES by DT from this equation say K1, K2, K3. So if I want to calculate DES by DT. Also we know that we need to substitute ES. So definitely we need to calculate ES. So how to calculate ES? Because if you look at this equation, the ES is controlled by three different equations. So the first equation is this. This is the first equation where the ES is converted into a ENP. Whereas the second equation is this, that is the reversible reaction. The reversible reaction, again the ES is converted into a something else. In both the first and second reaction, the ES is actually converted into something else. It's not producing, it's actually consuming because of these reactions. Where are the forward reaction? So this forward reaction, I can say the third reaction, where E plus S is provided convert into a ES. So where there is a synthesis of ES. So I should account all the three reaction in order to calculate, say, DES by DT. How? I include all the reactions. So I include negative symbol in order to follow the first reaction. So K3 into ES. Why ES? Again ES is a substrate for this first reaction. Again I have to give a negative symbol K2. Again the substrate is ES. In both these reactions the ES is converted into something else. Whereas your third reaction say K1 into E into S because the only reaction which is synthesis is the so as per the 
steady state your des by dt is equal to 0. So, apply this in this equation. So, it is become 0 is equal to, so I am combining this say minus k2 plus k3 plus k1 into e yes so i'll write k2 plus k3 so here i here i forget to mention es so es is equal to k1 into e into s I remodify this, that means uh, rearranging this. So K1, sorry, K2 plus K3 into ES, sorry. One second, I will erase this. K2 is equal to K3 divided by K1 is equal to E yes divided by yes. So instead of this, this entire constant because k2, k3 is a constant, k1 is a constant, it's a combination of constants, right? Constants. So instead of writing this, I am writing km. So <coughs> So now, if I am writing that equation after substituting km, km is equal to E s divided by Vs. Say this is equation number 1. Now, so we know that the enzymes are conserved during the reactions. So whatever the enzyme you have added in the very beginning of the experiment that you can get it back in the later stage. Say if I want to calculate how much E is present. What is E? The available free enzyme. So that I can calculate at any point of time. Say after one minute if I want to calculate what is the available free enzyme. I can calculate by subtracting E naught minus Es. So what is E naught? E naught is nothing but the enzyme added at the beginning. Es is you know that enzyme substrate complex. So whatever the enzyme you have added, say if you added the enzyme say 100, if the E naught is if the E naught is 100. And out of this 100, say the enzymes are involving the enzyme substrate reaction, say in 30, then E is the available free enzyme is 70. So this way we can calculate how much free enzyme is present in the uh, reaction. So let me erase this. So, you take this equation as 2. Now, you substitute. So, I can modify this equation number 1, say like this. So, from this, if I want to calculate what is E. So, E is equal to nothing but Km into Es divided by S. Just a modification. Say this is equation number 3. Now substitute 3 in 2. That means from this equation you are substituting here. So it has become Km instead of E, I am substituting Km into Es divided by S is equal to 
E naught minus E S. So I am uh, rearranging this equation that means I bring this E S to the opposite side. So that means it is become K M into E S by S plus E S that is equal to only E naught. So in both this term you have E S is common so that you take it out. So the remaining you have K M by S plus 1 is equal to E naught. So what we need to calculate why we are doing we need to replace the E S quantity with the known entity. So we need to calculate E S. So keep E S in the left hand side you can before you do that let me erase this before we do that we further uh, simplify this how E S so you take LCM in this. So it will take LCM it will become like this. equal to E naught. So from this you can calculate E S. E S is equal to keep the E S in the left hand side. You bring the other quantity into the right hand side. So divided by K M plus S. So this is equation number 4. So you know what is the square bracket meaning I hope. The square bracket is representing the concentration. So you have that is why we are putting concentration whereas the km is not uh, a constant. So it is not changing. So that is why I am not putting a square bracket. Okay. Now come back and come back to this. So the, this is the equation number 4. Now what you need to do you need to substitute this 4 in equation number 1. So what is not 1 i. What is I says D is equal to K3 into ES. So now in this if you substitute equation number 4 in I sorry, something is uh, displaying so I will write it here. So V is equal to K3 instead of ES I am substituting so E naught into S divided by Km plus S. So now that Vm value Vm is the maximum velocity is equal to nothing but K3 into E naught. So look at this, this is the equation we are going to substitute in this. So what happens is your V become after substitution it is become instead of K3 but E0 you will become Vm into S divided by Km plus S. So this is what we call MM equation. Now we need to check whether this equation is explain that graph, right? So that is what we are going to see now, right? What is Vm? Vm is the um, maximum rate of reaction, whereas Km is the mm constant, whereas S is the substrate. So V is if you compare this equation with your real uh, non-enzymatic chemical reaction for a single substrate. It's something like this you got, but how differ from this? You compare this and this. So this is this equation is unable to explain the graph. Now we see whether this equation is explain that graph. So that is the next thing. So what is that graph says? So I will just draw the graph, redraw the graph.
So that graph says so that substrate rate of reaction we will get a graph like this. So this is a saturation point. This is zero order. So this is the first order. Let me see. So we'll take the equation, mm equation V is equal to Vm into S by Km plus S. So what is the difference between saturation point? What is the difference between before this? Here the concentration of S is less, less S concentration, whereas here the concentration of S is more. So that is a difference, that is a saturation point difference. Let me take that as an example, a case, say case 1. Say in this, if the S value, the concentration of S is much, much lesser than the value of Km, right? Km is some IMM constant. So if, I, if I'm assuming that S is much, much lesser, say if the Km value say 1, if the S value is 0 0.0001, if that is like this, so that's why this symbol is indicating. If that is a scenario, this Km plus S is become 1 plus 0 0.0001. So that is almost similar to 1. So this 1.001 is almost similar to 1. So in this scenario, the Km plus S can be written like Km alone. The same example, right? So if that is thing, so if I am substituting that condition, this particular condition, in the MM equation, how it is varies. Let me erase this examples. So you understand what I'm saying here. So if that is the case, your MM equation V is become Vm into S divided by Km. So here Vm is a constant, Km is a constant, only variable is S. So the rate of reaction now proportional to S because Vm Km is a constant. So this is nothing but the first order. So this is explained the first order part of the graph. So at low S substrate concentration, the V behaves like a first order reaction. Now case 2. What is case 2? After saturation. After saturation, these conditions become ulta, that is vice versa. Now, Km value is much, much lesser than the substrate because substrate concentration you have increased. So now you substitute that. Same example. If I am substituting this condition and if I am calculating the uh, Km plus S is equal to nothing but S because here the S value has become 1 and Km value has become 0 0.0001. So now it become one. So now you substitute that in a VM, MM equation, you will be V is equal to Vm into S. So instead of Km plus S, you just substitute S. So S, S is cancelled. So this implies V is equal to Vm. So that is B is become a constant. So that is explain the saturation point. So this is the Vm according to this, right? So it explains that this is nothing but zero order. Now I will introduce a, another case. What happen if the both Vm, Km and S is the same, just erasing this part. So case 3, what is that? Km is equal to Km is equal to S. So instead of Km, you substitute S in the equation. MM equation. 
So the MM equation become V is equal to Vm into S divided by instead of Km I am substituting S. So already there is another substrate concentration. It's become V is equal to Vm into S divided by this S plus S I am writing 2S. So the S, S get cancelled. V is equal to Vm by 2. So this is a very important uh, scenario. So based on this we can define the mm constant. How? We can calculate the Km value whenever say if I am calculating the Km value like this. So whenever V is equal to Vm by 2, say this is the point Vm by 2. So if I am extrapolating this from the graph and if I am drawing like this, whatever this S value that is equal to Km. So Km it is defined like this, whenever V is equal to Vm by 2, whatever the substrate concentration that is equivalent to Km. So the unit of Km is always equivalent to the substrate unit. If the unit of substrate is mg per ml, then it implies the value of unit of Km is also mg per ml. So even though it is a constant, it is not varying, but we are using the unit of Km with the substrate concentration. So this is all about the MM equation, uh, how to develop on various cases. Now, all the two part of the graph is explained with the MM equation. That's why the MM equation has a very significant role in the enzyme kinetics, right? So, we will see how, uh, how we can calculate a MM equation that is this constant. So, the Vm and Km is called MM constants. It is very, very important and significant. So how to calculate this Vm and Km? Because this is a nonlinear graph. What you have seen is a nonlinear graph. How we can calculate the, it in a better way? That is what our next lecture. Thank you.